How do you do, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls and men and women and children and mothers and fathers and people everywhere of all ages and in all walks of life? I am the Professor Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And our principal business today is an extraordinarily wonderful and dramatic thing. Consider the following. I have a can, an ordinary tin can, and I put some water in it, and I have been boiling the water until all the air in here has been driven out, and there is only water vapor. And then I see steam here, which is condensed water vapor. Now I'm going to go over where that can is cooking and stopper it up and, of course, take the fire away because I don't want any, any blowing up. And then we must listen very carefully and we'll hear something. Then I'm going to do something and you must watch it carefully. And the results are extraordinary. So come with me to my boiling cauldron. Come with me. Here is the can. There is the heat from below. There is the water vapor condensed. And I'm going to take this off here. Listen now. Oh, there's something. Oh, some more. Now, now I'm going to pour some cold water on this. Watch it now. Watch it. Oh, ho, ho, there it is. I just love that. Notice what happened. The water vapor in there was condensed. The pressure reduced. And the atmosphere squeezed it together. That is something to see. The push of the air. The push of the air. Gas out. Gas out. Gas out gas out. Now let us go to something else. Let us go to something else. <clears throat> let us go to something else. A spring. A spring. A spring. A spring which has wonderful properties. Wonderful properties. I'm going to put a load on it, and it stretches. I'm going to put another load on it, and it stretches more. I'll put another load on it, and it stretches more. And I call your attention to the beauty of the motion. The beauty of the motion. I better turn it so perhaps we see it better. The beauty of the motion. Now, there is a history regarding this, which I need to narrate because it is exciting. There was a man whose name I've mentioned before, whose name was Robert Hooke. He was a contemporary of Isaac Newton, and they hated each other. So that when Hooke, H-O-O-K-E, when Hooke discovered the law of the spring, he put it in a puzzle, in an anagram, so people could not steal the idea. And this is how he wrote it. And I'm going to copy it off. C-E-I-I-I-N-O-S-S-S-T-T-U-V. -I 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 and that is how he wrote The Law of the Spring. C E. I I I N O S S S T T U V. And I'm going to leave this for you to think about until we meet again in the hopes that you un will unravel the mystery of Mr. Hook and the law of the spring. And we will consider the spring somewhat more in our next visit with you. Thank you for watching.